two appraisers walk into a room and they're told to evaluate one single property. Now that started like a good setup for a joke, right? I'm sorry, there is no joke. The whole moral of that story was to simply say that I guarantee both of them are probably gonna come out with a different valuation. And it's hard, right? Well, we're taking collective data and we're trying to make it uh, very concrete, but truly it's subjective, right? Which one do we feel of these properties are more accurately a description of the current property that we're trying to evaluate? And today we're going to be discussing just that in the form of the cost approach. Now, some of you may already be familiar with exactly what that is when it comes to real estate valuation. And for those of you who are not, well, don't worry, we're going to cover it fairly in depth. We are going to cover the valuation method itself, right? How do you formulate it? And also when is it applicable to a specific property? So go ahead and strap up your boots and get ready for a show. Let's get to the video. This one, I want you to consider a simple formula. It's construction costs. In reality, the appraiser is going to take the construction costs, they're going to subtract their depreciation, and then they're going to add their market land value. That's in reality. But for the for the sake of a, a simplicity and understanding how you need to move through the process fairly quickly when you're going through valuation, always remember construction costs plus land value, market land value, will give you your overall cost approach valuation. So an example here would be, let's say that the construction costs were $200 a square foot and the building size was 10,000 square feet. So the construction cost alone would be $2 million. Now for the land, let's say the land was $50,000 an acre and there was three acres on that specific lot. So the valuation for the land would be $150,000. So you would then add the 2 million plus the 150,000 to give you 2,150,000. You can see a typo there. Don't worry about that. The overall number is correct. That $2,150,000 would be the valuation, uh, the number amount, the dollar amount that the value is given based on the cost approach for this example. Now, when we think about cost approach, we have to be able to identify the property that we're looking at and see if the cost approach is even applicable for that specific property. So when is the cost approach applicable? Think special use properties for number one. Special use properties are going to be properties that are completely independent of a company or how it's generating income, often supported by the government or private organizations. So we're thinking libraries, we're thinking schools, all of the public school systems or even private school systems, churches, things of that nature. Oftentimes we can think of new construction or renovation loans, AKA bridge loans as applicable for cost approach all nine times out of 10, that is what is going to be used because during the construction loan period or the bridge loan period, you may be paying interest only payments from one to three years while the construction is going on. And as soon as the construction is complete or the property is semi-stable, you will simply refinance out of that into a longer term loan. And so because it is short term interest only, the cost approach is going to be one of the primary methods there. As we mentioned, insurance. And so to shed a little bit more light on that, again, if we're on the beach and a hurricane comes through and completely wipes away the property, that's the insurance uh, job or responsibility or obligation to go back in and rebuild the property to today's standard, right? Same build out to today's standard. So they often, solely use the cost approach. They don't really care how much money it's making. They have to rebuild the property if something happened to them. Okay. And then unique and vacant properties. So when we think of a vacant property and let's just use an apartment complex as an example, or a retail strip mall, right? As an example, there are several tenants in there or several places for tenants to be, but nobody is there or nobody is currently paying rent. If no income is coming in, well, then we can't use the income approach, right? We can use the sales comparison, which may be a hybrid junction, but cost approach is also a reasonable application for a property just like that, as well as unique properties. And when we're saying unique, I want you to think of the most luxurious, obscure building in the city that you're in, right? Designed by a specific architect who 
may not even exist anymore or only has done three or four buildings in the world. It's not something that anybody can just go out and build. Because it's so unique like that, it's very it's going to be very difficult to find a sales comparison approach. Yes, they may use income approach, but the primary concern will be, well, what happens if something happened to the building? How can I get this uniqueness back? The cost approach will probably reign supreme here in the valuation methods. So now the question comes, how do I identify these costs? How do I, sitting back, try to think like an, uh, an appraiser and I come up with the value of the cost for construction and I come up with the cost of the land itself? And to be quite honest, there is no exact science. This is all an art form, even on the appraiser's end. Now, the appraisers, uh, they're probably going out and they have indus uh, industry in indices or indexes that show them what the average costs are. They have records that they can research. And although you may be able to find something like that as well, I recommend simply just going out to the contractor or the developer directly and maybe go to several of them that do similar projects like that in your market area. And once we identify exactly what those costs are, we can come up with an average ourselves. And once we understand what that average price per square foot is, well, then we're ready to move on to the next problem set, right? Which is the cost of the land. Now, when we identify the land value, one of the easiest ways to do it is to simply search in a near proximity, you know, 10, 15 miles in a, or let's go 10 miles, but uh, 10 to 15 miles with very similar local uh, character traits. And so what I mean by that is, is it on a major highway? Is it actually next to a commercially developed center? Is the traffic count uh, similar? We want to make sure that it's not just a rural land sale, because I understand that 10 to 15 miles is quite large for some cities. You know, I live in a big city, so I'm thinking, eh, we're barely getting to the outskirts. But for some cities, it's large. So we don't want to compare central downtown land to agricultural land. It's not going to work. So we want to look for similar land values. And then we want to come up with an average price per acre to kind of give us a starting point for our local lot. Now, I want you guys to also consider this. Understand that if it's new construction, then raw land makes a lot of sense because typically a new construction, they're going to have to go in and make the uh, make the lot build ready or site ready by doing all the formal paperwork with the city, zoning, so forth and so on. If it's an existing lot or an existing building, and you're looking at rebuild costs, right? Then the land is already developed. The reason that's important to understand is because raw land sells cheaper than site build ready land. Okay. So if you are trying to be as accurate as possible, if you're looking at a con new construction, go for raw land. And if you're looking at site build ready land, then you want to try as best as you can to find that. Now, we all can agree there's probably a lot more detail we can go into when it comes to the cost approach itself. However, I really wanted to share this video with you to give you a broad understanding of the cost approach itself, understand when it becomes applicable, and now we can discuss how it actually works with the other valuation methods. Now, in order to see the next video, it would probably help if you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get an alert when it comes out. And if you found this content valuable, or any information gained at all, go ahead and give it a like. And if there's any other topic you'd like discussed here on this channel, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.